Up to three out of four children with vision issues aren't diagnosed at school screenings. Unfortunately, vision screenings in schools and pediatrician offices provide less than 4% of the information generated during a comprehensive eye exam and are not a substitute for annual optometrist visits. Today, we meet with Dr. Stephen Reed, who will discuss why an in-person eye exam is so important to preserving a child's vision and development, as well as the dangers of eye undiagnosed eye problems. Dr. Stephen. Hello, how are you today? Good, how are you? Uh, doing well, thank you, considering all things. <laughs> thank you for taking the time joining us today. Um, of course, we're going to talk about something that's, you know, very important to address. Uh, about three out of four children with vision issues aren't diagnosed, you know, at school screenings. So obviously getting a visual exam, you know, is important. So why should a comprehensive eye exam be included on one of the check checklists for parents with their kids? I might start out by highlighting that it's not only should be on the checklist, but a very, very high level priority item on the checklist. It's important mainly for two, two reasons, one developmental and one learning. Many people don't know that a child when they're born does not have 20-20 vision and that just like the rest of their body, their visual system has to develop. So in those early years of life as that system is developing, if things work properly, then they end up with 20-20 vision and all is good. But if there happens to be some type of vision disorder or ocular disease, that interferes with that process, then you can impact that development. And then if it's not caught later on when that development stops, that particular issue can be locked in uh, for life in, in some cases. And you did mention, you know, that obviously eye problems, they could be sneaky, you know, catch up on the kids, they might not know. So how do, you know, in the long run, how do un undiagnosed eye problems affect the children's learning in the long run? Many of these kids, if they don't want to learn, they may behave in certain ways. For instance, they, 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 they might not appear to be as smart as their classmate, where in fact they are, they just don't love to learn. Or they may act up, you know, because they're trying to avoid the learning, and so they're labeled as having a, a behavioral disorder. And so if you extrapolate that out, then, you know, that child, if that child doesn't learn through their grade school years, that can affect everything from their career choice to their entire life. So it's really that critical. And how in your, you know, pretty much what you've seen, like, how do you think the rise of the screen time has impacted eye health? When you're looking at a screen or anything up close, the muscles that are inside of your eyes have to tighten up in order for you to focus and see. It's very similar to focus in a, a camera. So our eyes are made to be very flexible, meaning that you, you can look far and near the muscles, they tighten up, they relax. But if you if you have a child who's constantly focused up close and it's causing strain, then eventually your, your brain's going to say, wait a minute, let's just fix this problem and let's turn you into somebody who's nearsighted. Because nearsighted people see great up close, but they can't see far off. Now the child has an issue that they have to wear glasses or contacts from there moving forward. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Dr. Steven, where can we go for more information on all of this that you've mentioned for parents? Yeah, a great resource is the American Optometric Association's website, and that is aoa.org. Uh, I would encourage you to go there. We have a doctor locator. So if you're like, I need to get my eyes checked, but I don't have a family eye doctor, then uh, you can type in your zip code and doctors of optometry that are in your area will populate and you can find one to take your child to. There's also a lot of good other good information on our website too. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Stephen, for taking the time today, joining us and telling us all about this. That's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.